Hello, this is video lecture on VLSI testing and testability. And today's topic is built-in self-test that is BISHT. In this session, we are going to study following topics. First one is introduction to BISHT followed by the different types of test pattern generator. In that, we are going to focus on two types that is one is exhaustive test generator and another one is pseudo exhaustive test generator. Now what is BIST? Testing and verification circuitry is embedded in the main logic chip itself. Apart from the main logic, the testing circuitry and verification both are embedded in the same chip so that we need not use a separate device for testing. This increases controllability and observability so that making the test generation and fault detection easier. So we can easily detect and we can reduce the test time also. In conventional testing, usually CAD tools are used to generate test pattern and automatic test equipment is used for verification. Verification means whatever output you observe that you compare with the expected and decide whether there is a fault or not. But in BIST, both these expensive AT and CAD tools are avoided because they are embedded in the main chip. A typical BIST configuration is shown below. We can see here it has typically three functional blocks. First one is test pattern generator. So it will generate the test vectors required for testing the circuit. This is circuit under test, DUT, device under test. Then what output you get and we need one more circuitry for analyzing and we have to compare with the expected and decide whether output is correct or not or circuit is faulty or not. So in this first we are going to study about this test pattern generator. So in that test pattern generator we have four types exhaustive, pseudo exhaustive, pseudo random and deterministic. In exhaustive testing generator as the name itself specifies that all possible input patterns are applied. Suppose if a circuit has n inputs, then the test generator will produce all the possible input combination that is 2 power n number of test vectors. One advantage is, is you can detect all the faults, all the possible test vector can be generated. But the demerit is it will work only for if n is small, if n is large generating those 2 power n number of test vector is not practical. Next one is pseudo exhaustive testing generator. So in this method what it does is it retains the advantages of exhaustive testing while significantly reduce the number of test pattern. So in exhaustive we can have all the possible test vectors so that feature it will retain but it will reduce the number of test vector. How it is, we will see that. The basic idea is to partition the circuit into several sub circuit such that each sub circuit has few enough inputs for exhaustive testing to be feasible. So if there are example, for example, if there are five inputs, so if you want to use exhaustive, then you have to produce two power five number of test vectors. But if you can, partition that system into two. One is one set will have three number of inputs and another will have two number of inputs. Now this two distinct part if you want to test you need two power three number of test vector and two power two number of test vector. That is most uh, that is much better than the previous one. So this concept has been used in the following reference that is autonomous design verification technique. It is proposed by following author 
McCluskey, yes, B. Nesbitt, 1981. We'll take one example for autonomous design verification. So this is the circuit under test. You can see one output and six input you have. So if you want to use exhaustive testing, you have to produce two power six number of test vectors. But if you partition this whole circuit into two like this, you add two OR gate and two control signal MC1 and MC2. And you can see this part of circuit has only A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D are connected and we have used an additional OR gate and one extra control signal MC1. Similarly, the lower part has only four input actually that is C, D, E, F. So that is connected in this fashion and on additional OR gate with additional input is used. Suppose you want to test C1 now. You can make MC21. So this whole circuit becomes redundant. So this will not be considered. This is a don't care this part. So NAND gate one of the input is one. Now only this part of the circuit is active. So we can use exhaustive that means how many number of inputs four so two power four 16 inputs we can apply we can use exhaustive method here similarly if you want to test the below circuit you can make mc1 equal to one so this whole upper circuit is become don't care so now the circuit is essentially controlled by def this so then you can test you again use exhaustive testing four inputs 60 16 combination. Now, one more technique. This is the modification of the previous technique. Here, if there are multiple outputs and each output, if you can write a subset of a particular number of inputs, then we can propose a method to generate the or to reduce the number of test vectors. How it is? Take an example this one. In this, you have three inputs A, B, C and two output X, Y. So first we will write a dependence matrix. What is the dependent matrix? Here the row variable represents output and column variable, variable represents inputs. Now if an output is dependent on a particular input that cell we will write one so in this you can see the x is a function of a b but it is not a function of c so we will write a b 1 1 c below c we will write 0 similarly y is a function of you can see here it is c and b so we will write b and c column 1 it is not dependent on it we will write 0 so next step, we will partition this matrix such that suppose if you merge any two column or any n number of columns, then if you count number of ones in each row, it should not exceed one. That means we have three columns A, B, C. If you can merge A and C. So this is first row, this is second row. So if you can merge these two columns, then number of ones in this particular partition only one. And second partition will have also number of one is only one. Second row if you see, here also maximum number of ones is one here. Here also maximum number of one. So in each partition and you take each row each partition and each row then you count number of ones in which the number of ones should not exceed one so you may ask can we make a and b group so if you merge a and b together then the number of ones in the top row for this particular partition it is two however this partition you have zero that is okay 
but here you have two number of one that is not allowed so suppose you want to make bc together one one group so then number of ones in the first row it is one okay but in second row and bc partition will have two number of ones it is not allowed so only one possible partition here that is written here now what we will do we will merge all the columns belong to a particular partition so that means this partition will have two is it's having two columns so you merge those two so you will get only one column and b is separate so you will write separate now the test vectors for exhaustive testing how many number of test vectors required since you have merged these two columns now you need total number of test vectors is 2 power 2 then what you do is you or these two columns that is 1 plus 0 or 1 or 0 that is 1 and 0 or 1 1 so this is finally what we get it is a reduced to verification test set what it tells is it gives two information one is p what is p number of partitions how many partitions we have we have two partitions so we will write p equal to 2 and what is w the maximum number of 1 in any row so what is maximum number of 1 in any row so if you see here maximum number of 1s here it is 2 here it is 2 so maximum is 2 so it is 2 so we will get two information p equal to 2 w equal to 2 so what we can do with this and how we can produce a test vector that we will see in the next slide. So case 1 p equal to w. So p equal to w means that is the previous set in the example p equal to w. So here, here p equal to w. So how many number of test vectors required? So that is given by total number of test vector comes 2 power p vectors. So p is 2, 2 power 2 is 4. So you want to do a pseudo exhaustive testing here in this you can have only four vectors what are those four vectors you give this AC club together and you call it X and B you call it Y. So total number of test vectors total number of inputs now only two that is X and Y and total number of possible test vector 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1. So that means AC will have the same value. So that is x. If you give 0, 0, A and C will have value 0, 0, B will be also 0. But if you give 0, 1, A and C will be 0, 0, but B will be 1. So it means there will be 2 power p number of vectors. This p decided by the this number. P is 2. So you need only 4 test vectors. Otherwise, we needed actually 8 number of test vectors. Similarly, another is p equal to w plus 1. Then the minimum test of all patterns of p bits with odd or even parity. So we will take an example and I will explain this one, the case 2. And case 3, you have p is greater than w plus 1. So in that case, what happens? Test pattern consists of two or more subsets, each of which contains all possible patterns of p bits having a specific constant weight and this constant weight is given by a table so we have to refer this table and we have to decide suppose if p equal to 5 and w equal to 3 then according to this equation p is greater than w plus 1 that is 5 is greater than 3 plus 1 then we have to see that w equal to 3 p is greater than 4 so how many number of test vector will be there it will be 2p what is p here p is 5 so 5 into 2 10 so total number of test vectors will be 10 but you have a specific constant weight subsets that means in this it is written 1 comma p minus 1 so one subset you will have the constant weight 1 so that means total number of test vector is 10 5 here 5 here first 5 the constant weight will be 1 so you can see each row if you see number of ones will be 1 only and next one is p minus 1 p is 5 in this example so weight is 4 
so this weight will be for so total number of phones in each row if you take it is four number of phones so we will solve one problem in this so we will understand better so that we will see in the next tutorial